So often many ask, what is the meaning of life? What is the purpose of life? Why do you even wake up in the morning? In this video, I'll provide a direct scientific answer to this question, in addition to an indirect answer that you may actually be quite satisfied to hear. However, I say may because not every single one of you watching this video will achieve this purpose in life, and thus I shall explain the potential repercussions of not achieving this purpose in life. We humans tend to see ourselves as very special in regards to other organisms, and so we are very special in the sense that we are not only intelligent, but we are conscious. Hence, we are the only known organisms to contemplate what the meaning of life is. However, despite being special in this sense, we are not so different from other species. DNA is the instruction manual of what makes you who you are, and it is found in your body in the form of 23 pairs of chromosomes for a total of 46 chromosomes. You got one set of 23 chromosomes from one parent inside a sperm and the other 23 from the other parent inside of an egg. Now, each of these chromosomes contains numerous genes, which are made up of DNA. We all have two copies of each gene, one from our mother and one from our father. Over 99% of these genes in human beings are precisely the same, however, that very small amount is what contributes to our very unique differences. In fact, even chimpanzees share about 96% of the same genes as us. We even share over 60% of the same genes with a fruit fly or even a banana. And it was these genes that created your very body, just like any other organism, to replicate. Richard Dawkins, author of The Selfish Gene, the book that inspired me to make today's video, and the other most recent video, refers to the organism's body as simply a survival machine. So genes are immortal, not, not the DNA, of course that's not, that turns over in a very short space of time, but the coded information is potentially immortal. And that means that the difference between a successful gene and an unsuccessful gene really matters. It's going to matter for millions of years. So the genes that make it through those millions of years are the ones that are good at it. And good at it means good at building bodies, good at controlling the processes of embryology to make bodies which have what it takes to preserve those genes and pass them on. And so I use this phrase survival machine, a body, an individual is a, is a survival machine. And that's by far the most powerful way of interpreting what an individual organism is. An individual organism is a throwaway survival machine. The goal of our genes is to exist potentially forever. So far, the genes inside myself and you watching the video right now have been successful in this endeavor. Your body, the survival machine, was created by these genes in order to reproduce and continue the cycle, allowing for the genes to potentially live on forever. Therefore, the purpose of life, the reason to wake up in the morning, is to pass down your genes and replicate. In other words, to reproduce. For the Homo sapien, you and I, this is through sexual intercourse. Our bodies, despite being conscious, are simply just survival machines, puppets of the genes. You are something that makes copies of yourself, you are a replicator. If that is the case, you you will have other consequences in the world. These other consequences, we call them the phenotypes. Because the replicators are making copies of themselves, the replicators that create the best machines, the best phenotypes to replicate, they increase in value, they increase in number. The replicators that fail at creating performant machines, that, that fail at creating fit phenotypes, they, um, they fail and so they, they replicate less and there's less of them and eventually they reach extinction. That is the principle of natural selection and it explains why our whole bodies seem designed to replicate our genes. They are all oriented toward allowing us to breathe, allowing us to survive, allowing us to enjoy sex, allowing us to eat so that we can reproduce. That's why Life forms have the characteristics of self-survival, of self-protection, and of kind of self-interested behavior in general. Whatever they are confronted with, they evolve due to the selfish gene principle, due to natural selection. They evolve toward better service of their replicator. So, there you have it. That is the purpose of life. 
that is why you're here. Many of you are likely disappointed in this direct scientific explanation and would have wanted something deeper, but this in itself can be seen as quite beautiful. When you really break down what is involved in the reproductive process for human beings at least. While this is not always the case, a fair amount of the time this reproductive process involves two individuals loving each other very much. This is especially important because it involves both parents caring for the offspring, creating a healthy environment with nurturing for growth, increasing the chances that the genes will continue to be passed on once that offspring becomes an adult and mates. So if you prefer a more beautiful way at looking at the purpose of life, one can say that the purpose of life is to perhaps fall in love. But again, scientifically, love isn't actually required for the genes to be passed down, but there is some scientific merit to maintaining the same partner since it increases the chances of a more nurtured upbringing for the offspring. However, this doesn't have to be the case either. Evolved to conceal ovulation is because it made it easier for them to have affairs, mate with a high value man with superior genetics to her current partner, and then trick that partner into raising offspring that are not his. I know it's horrible, but biology is just biology, and evolution is not guided by considerations of fairness or justice. It's just genes trying to replicate themselves and make it to the next generation at whatever cost. And the depressing truth is that this is not a bug this is a feature. Infidelity is built into our biology. Evolution has positively selected for it. It's a tough reality to face, but when you consider this from the perspective of the gene that wants to propagate itself. So there you have it. This is the purpose of life. I know many of you will claim that the purpose of life is subjective, and you're free to discuss that in the comments. I'm very open-minded and I like reading other thoughts, but from a scientific perspective, the answer to this question is relatively straightforward. And while just the plain scientific answer may not be too inspiring to hear, you can also choose the prettier perspective of stating that the purpose in our lives is to find love. Now knowing this, you can look at your life and your day-to-day -day activities and even long-term goals and break them down into their most fundamental motive. With some of them, you will find at the most fundamental level that the purpose of these goals is to replicate and pass down your genes or reproduce. For instance, in some species, having a nice nest will impress the other mate most likely because this means the offspring will have a safe and healthy environment to be nurtured in. Iron power woven around a central sapling carpeted with moss. This grand design is no nest. It's the ultimate seduction parlor. His bower channels his song in her direction. A final check. All is to her liking. Humans are not so different. While someone owning a huge mansion or exotic car will not exactly create sexual desire from the other sex, this does not take away from the fact that the individual owning these luxuries is acquiring them for that purpose because this is what they believe. Oh, you, you throw money at my tears, that's not, which that's is not, okay. That, that, you, know, uh, you know what? Okay, uh, you know, when you say that, it hurts my feelings. Why? Because, because what if we were poor? It would be a, more difficult. If we were poor, Papa, you, we would be divorced because there's no way you know how to show me love. What? <laughs> because you throw money at my tears, and if we were poor, what would you throw at my tears? Love. Okay, anyways. Let's, let's <laughs> what was that? <laughs> I love you. I love you, okay, Papa. I love you too. Okay, my final, my final word on this. <laughs> I usually don't like to talk Sometimes this fundamental goal resides on a subconscious level. You may have convinced yourself that the reason you bought the nice BMW is because you enjoy collecting sports cars, which indeed may be true, but subconsciously you have another motive for purchasing this luxury vehicle as well. All of your goals, big or small, at the very most fundamental levels are motivated by either the passing of genes or the nurturing of existing genes, whether that is self-survival or teaching your child how to program so he can make money 
one day. However, there is an exception to humans specifically, given that we are conscious beings. Sometimes we may exploit certain features that are intended for our survival, such as watching adult videos or taking drugs. Now, there's something I didn't tell you yet. Earlier, I alluded to the fact that your goals may also be oriented towards nurturing your offspring since they will carry your genes and hopefully pass down the genes once again. Now, notice that I use the word hopefully. I say hopefully because there is no guarantee that an offspring raised in the best environment with the best nurturing will still be successful in passing down the genes. Why? Well, if you watched my last video, you saw how I explained the importance of attraction and the attraction is simply the identification of ideal genes. This is why beauty is not in the eye of the beholder, it is something that is pre-programmed within us. The brain has a specific area solely dedicated to detecting faces, that's how important this is. Take a look at the evolution of the skull, for example. Humans evolved to have the most efficient space for the brain since it was the brain that allowed the human species to be the most dominant species on Earth. But it doesn't always have to be for survival reasons, it can be for reproductive reasons as well. There are features in each species that are solely ideal for being attractive and thus successful in reproduction, such as very colorful feathers of a bird. Remember, the end goal is to pass down the gene successfully. Originally, all humans had brown eyes. It was not until there was a genetic mutation causing the failure to produce brown eyes that resulted in one single blue-eyed individual. How did this one single set of genes from one single individual spread so vastly? It was seen as attractive and thus allowed for frequent mating. So now you may be wondering, well, what if the offspring is not attractive? In other words, the genes failed to produce a body capable of reproduction through natural selection. This is common, much more common than you think in fact. Researchers in Germany found that throughout human history, mothers have regularly outnumbered fathers, meaning that more women have passed down their DNA than men. In other words, there have always been male incels. But it's even worse in some other species, only 28.2% of male elephant seals achieved paternities. And remember, in the human species, the females choose their mate contrary to some other species where other males fight for the mate with dominance. This is why we are evolving to become more attractive. So again, what happens if the offspring is not attractive enough? The genes, thus, will not be passed down. Therefore, the offspring will have failed its life's purpose, ending the lineage of those specific genes if it is an only child. Okay then, what happens if the offspring then fails its life purpose? Well, remember, just like elephant seals, if more females are passing down their DNA than males, this means more males will be unsuccessful. Hence, it may be counterintuitive to view the male versus female depression rate chart. Why are more females still more depressed than males? Well, remember, in order to be a statistic on this chart, you need to be diagnosed. And given societal standards for males' emotional or lack of emotional behavior, males are much less likely to discuss their feelings or even depression and often not get diagnosed. When you take a look at the amount of suicides in males versus females, it tends to tell a whole new story. Furthermore, the risk of suicide among divorced men was over twice as likely as that of married men, whereas in women, there was no statistical difference in married Married and divorced women. All around the world, the rates for men are higher than women. India is the country with the closest men to women ratio, and India is known for many religious, organized marriages rather than allowing the female to choose their mate. So now you have your answer to what the purpose of life is. It's beautiful for some, but unfortunately, the reality is cold for others. While I would not advise giving up, if you do ever hypothetically find yourself concluding that you may not be able to achieve this purpose due to genetic limitations, keep in mind what I mentioned earlier about exploiting the features in our brains for enjoyment. There are healthy ways to cope. Consider taking up new hobbies, having a positive impact on the world. You could still find enjoyment in life, and that's the beauty of being conscious. in two different worlds right now okay we were raised to believe something that isn't true and that's if you know all you gotta do you just gotta be a nice stand-up guy get a nice job find that nice girl get your nice picket white picket fence and your dog and your kids and <laughs> See, that's not that's not going to be going on anymore. We're going through basically the 
collapse of civilization right now. You gotta deal with it. You gotta suck it up. You think, you know, you're thinking all these things, oh, it's not my looks. It's not my looks. It's not my looks. Okay? Take everything you are. You can, and go do yourself. Go do an OkCupid okay experiment. Go do a Tinder experiment. <laughs> you know, as long as you, as long as you're genetically superior from day one, height, bone structure, that's what matters. That's all that matters. I don't know when you guys are gonna <laughs> get it figured out. You're not, you're trying to catch up. You're trying to, fill in the blank, you know what I mean? You're thinking, this is all I gotta do. Female sexual selection was one of the driving factors that differentiated us from chimpanzees. It's a major factor. Chimpanzee females are not selective maters. They go into estrus, they'll mate with anything. What happens is the dominant males chase the subordinate males away, and so they end up leaving more offspring, but it's not a consequence of selection on the part of the females. In human beings, it's completely different. Concealed ovulation, and intense selection pressure from women on men. You have twice as many female ancestors as you have male ancestors. To make bodies which have what it takes to preserve those genes and pass them on. And so I use this phrase survival machine. A body, an individual, is a, is a survival machine. And that's by far the most powerful way of interpreting what an individual organism is. An individual organism is a throwaway survival machine for the self-replicating coded information which it contains. And the fate of that coded information is crucially bound up with the fate of the body in which it sits. If the body in which it sits dies before reproducing, then that coded information is not going to go on for the next generation and the next and potentially for tens of millions of years.